All right, what's up guys, Azura here, and today we're finally starting off with the set 4 decklist, and none other to start off is Chrono Dragon Next Stage, the face of set 4, probably the card that most people are most hyped for from this set, and uh, definitely does deliver, uh, although I will say, uh, it honestly isn't Next Stage himself that delivers, it's all the other things that came from that deliver, so without further ado, let's get on with the list. So as you can see, quite a bit of new cards actually, uh, obviously Next Stage is here as well. But you'll see you notice already that he is not a 4 of, and I'll get to that when we get to that. So, first off, my starter of choice is still the Timepiece Draco Kid. Um, uh, this is your just a generic Grade 3 Searcher starter. The reason I choose to play this one is just because uh, uh, being able to get the card off the board early is really nice. Uh, 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 even though this deck does have access to 8 Chrono Jet Sound, you still need to draw one of your Grade 3s. So, uh, with this, you can mulligan a little more aggressively to try to dig for other better cards, like uh, dig for intercept PGs, all that stuff. And so you just start trying to get rid of these like that. And it can uh, also just help you have Strive Water later if you need it. So I think that the, the overall, that the timepiece is more versatile than the uh, Gunner Gear. So that's why I personally still choose to play the uh, timepiece instead. Well, that's it for my starter. Great ones. Uh, four PGs. Nothing else to say here. PGs are PGs. Four Strive Water. Strive Water are Strive Water. Not a lot to say here. Every Basically, every deck in G plays. Uh, Eater is not taken up by this. This deck is no different, and so the actual great ones, you got uh, first four, uh, two GGs, two GGs, her skill is on place, so Soul Blast, you draw one. Uh, realistically, you're never resolving more than one, you only play, you play two just because, or I play two just because uh, uh, I don't want to have to ride one or have to damage check one and just not have the other one to, use, to uh, have access to the other one, so. Two of these, uh, one Maki on place Soul Charge one. I hate these cards with a passion, but this deck does need the soul, so uh, I'm just playing as a one of it's tutorable with the upstream and the fate rider, so I don't think definitely don't think you need more than one of this card. Um, if you're playing a build that's still playing Legion, um, then uh, you probably do want more of this card just because uh, the mate uh, does need soul. But since this deck isn't as heavy on souls and as other builds would be, I think one is more than enough. As long as you don't, if you damage check it's whatever, you just have to be more wary of your soul. If you uh, have the ability to call it, then cool, you get extra soul, so you can be a little more lenient with your soul usage. And finally, uh, the two of is a new card is the uh, Erningen. Uh, he got uh, nerfed quite badly from his CGG, TCG counterpart, uh, but his skill is uh, GB1. Once per turn, during your main phase, uh, and the TCG did not have the skill on it, so like, it was whenever, the, the proc condition on it at least. Uh, but in this game, it is uh, during your main phase, when your opponent's card is uh, bot decked by your card effect, or yeah, put back to deck by a card effect, and your friend goes a great through a higher chrono jet, you can, um, you can counter charge one. So. Uh, the reason this card has got a lot worse because uh, this card does not proc up of Jet's uh, uh, stride bonus anymore. So this card has basically been relegated to it only counter charges off of uh, Fate Ride or not Fate Ride, uh, Glimmer Breath or the CV2, the Relic Master. So that's why I don't play too many of cards. I do, I do think it's a nice option to have in the deck, but uh, being main phase only means that in this deck specifically it only works with Glimmer Breath, so that kind of sucks. But overall, it is still one of the better 7Ks you can play in the deck, and I do think having an extra counter is nice, so that's worth see why I choose to play two of this card in this grade 1 lineup. So that's it for grade 1s. Grade 2s, uh, one of just the uh, Pony, or the Gear Horse, I think. I hit counter charge one, it's kind of whatever, it's there, it's what the other one of. Uh, if there is definitely other builds running around playing Legions that plays like less of the uh, new grade 3, and you still play some outside Legion. Uh, if, you, if I were to play that, I'd probably cut this one of and one Glimmer Breath for two of the mates, and then uh, play like two or three of the Legion. But I personally am trying playing around with this more, uh, and I personally do like, do like this, so and that's why I personally do not play the Legion. But uh, the, I think the Legion is like a fine card. I just personally value having extra Chrono just more than having the Legion. So, yeah. but that's besides the point. One of the one of the uh, counter charging ponies. Next up for Eshins, uh, GB one once per turn. When your opponent's card is bought deck by, by your card effect, C, uh, CB1 and she gets the skill, uh, your opponent current card worth grade 0, so uh, she has she has guard restrict, but you play her mainly because she has resist. Resist is really good, resist intercepts are really good, uh, and turns out being able to tutor it with the Fate Riders, it makes it even better, so. A, uh, she is a 9k resist intercept with occasional upside, so a really good card. I see no reason not to play this card before, the card's really good. Uh, next up, Glimmer Breath, uh, on play, GB1. If your Vanguard's are three through a hard Chrono Jet, Soul Blast 1, Counter Blast 1, Bot Deck 1 of your opponent's rear guard, and it gets plus 2k. So, this card can act as a solo attacker, it can Bot Deck a card to help you push extra damage or spin way back where you don't want to deal with. <coughs> Overall, pretty good card. Um, the reason I played 4 of it, as opposed to before where I was playing less of it, is just because uh, on your next stage turn, you do need a copy of this if you want to push face 4 times. 
And so uh, I don't play four thinking that I'll resolve all four or I even resolve like three or anything like that. I just I play four so I can draw it, so I can draw the one more often when I need it. So, but yeah, uh, that's really why I choose to play four. But I don't rarely ever will you actually resolve this card more than once a game. But uh, I do think the ability to just being able to draw it when you need it is really nice. And finally, the new uh, new addition to the deck is the Upstream Dragon. His skill is GB one. Uh, when this unit attacks the Vanguard, you may have him gain four K. So optional, you don't have to get you don't have to have him gain, gain the power. If you do give him four K power, however. Uh, at, the, at, at the end of the battle, he puts himself back to, into the deck and searches. And he searches for a grade one and calls it as rest. So you may think that this card is not good just because it's an intercept that goes away to become a grade one instead, and the grade one comes, comes as rest. Uh, I do think the grade one being uh, coming as rest is not the best, but it is still a grade one you can tutor for. Uh, but the reason this card is good is because one, it's a solo attacker, and two, it sets you up for the following turns, or it, it can dig you for. Um, uh, basically, it sets, it sets you up for falling turns, or you can um, find stuff like GG to turn this into an actual plus one, which is pretty, really nice. Uh, and this card actually has a great synergy with something like Fate Rider, because you can do is use this, swing at Vanguard, uh, sp uh, swap it back to the deck, call a grade one with it, and next turn, if they didn't get rid of the grade one, the Fate Rider can just spin that back for an extra grade two later. So, pretty good, uh, pretty cool synergy there. But uh, how I look at it is uh, any deck that can remove your intercepts, uh, if you have one Ishin, and one of this, which is very plausible because you only need to draw one of these, you can just for the other one with Fate Rider. Uh, if, the, if your opponent's playing something like, for example, in, like in the mirror, right? This card was dying anyways. This card getting off the board anyways. You spin it back, you get some extra value out of it. If they don't want to get rid of the grade one, uh, cool, you got to keep it. If uh, they got rid of the grade one, they essentially got rid of the the same thing, right? So, uh, I do think this thing is very nice. It's a very good card, being solo hack and can send you for next turn. And the best thing about this card is that if you don't want to back, don't want to put it back, you don't have to, which is really good. So at worst, it's a 9k vanilla, uh, but the ceiling of this card is, I'd say, that actually relatively high. Uh, don't let the fact that this card uh, goes back into the deck dissuade you from playing it. I think this effect is actually really, really powerful. Uh, being completely free also really helps. So yeah. Now it's a free twos, free threes, or triggers, I guess. Uh, first off, four heal guards. No reason not to play these. Um, main rider of the deck, the Chrono Jet Dragon. Uh, GB2. Actually relevant now because of the next stage. Uh, when Zuna attacks the Vanguard, if you're um, GB2 and Zuna attacks the Vanguard, he gets plus 5k and your opponent would uh, guard the Sentinel. They have the Scar Grief there as well, so Glory Effect. And um, uh, when, you're, when you're shooting the Stride, see you and bot deck, bot deck on your opponent's Grief So when you try on top of it, spin the card, let's do extra damage, gets your, can get rid of back if you wanted to. And the uh, reason why this is relevant now is because um, when you uh, use next stage, next stage stands your Vang um, stands your heart as a stand your heart, so this, this your second swing with that card is now with the card district. So, actually pretty relevant now. So, uh, pretty good card. Definitely your main ride and the only thing you ever want to be on. So, now that's one. That's the reason why I don't care about the legions because uh, I only ever want to be on Chrono Jet anyways. And to help us get to that Chrono Jet, we we're playing for the Valley. So this card, the new card. Uh, he has a rear guard skill. Uh, not basically never comes up, but occasionally it might. So, GB one when the unit attacks hits a Vanguard, you can CB one to choose on your opponent's front row rear guard and block that kid. So the reason why this card doesn't do anything is because uh, if they have double intercept, this card doesn't do anything. It just kind of hits, and then you can't use these skills because they don't have any front row anymore. But the reason we actually play this for is Vanguard skill. Uh, when your G unit strides on top of this unit, on strides on top of this card, or strides on this card, uh, that your G unit gains the skill once per turn. CB one, search your deck for a Chrono Jet Dragon and uh, and uh, I don't know what the term for this is, but it, it becomes your heart. And then this card goes back to the bottom of your deck. So, what this card does basically is it fixes the, when you start on top of it, it fixes your heart. So, uh, first, so uh, but this card basically just acts as four extra copies of Chrono Jet. You run into this, you straight into whatever. Uh, uh, this thing now gives that card the seal to swap your heart out for a Chrono Jet instead. So, uh, pretty good, pretty good, definitely really good. I think this card is one of the best inclusions in the deck just because uh, you basically cannot whiff on Chrono Jet anymore. You see a grade three, unless it's your one of you are riding Corona Jet, which is really really good. So, that, and finally the one of I'm playing this, the Steam Maiden uh, Ool, I think uh, this card doesn't do anything. There's an eleven K vanilla, but all your other grade threes don't do anything either. Uh, she's cute, that's why I choose player. But uh, this locking me, whatever. Uh, <laughs> I think this actually just does not matter at all whatsoever what this card, what this lot is. I just think it should be a grade three because I think crits are bad. So yeah, that's a grade threes, and finally the G zone. So. My one of tech is Chronos Command. I think this card still has its uses, just being a basically a board, a back row board wipe. Uh, 
uh, uh, skill is on hit to Vanguard, Cell Blast, one counter blast, two to bot deck all your opponents in regards. So, uh, so if your opponent plays into this card, this card feels, feels amazing. Otherwise, it's just kind of there. Uh, the other one slot you can play in here instead is the uh, is the Epoch Maker or Epoch Maker. Uh, that card also helps you deal with that card helps you deal with intercepts instead or resist intercepts instead. It's pretty nice, but uh, I personally personally like never go into it. But I can see myself going to this card once in a while, so that's why I choose to play this as one of. I think this one slot does not actually matter at all. You can just play what you want. Uh, yeah. So yeah. And uh, next off, uh, two Ragnar Clocks. He's gonna attack the Vanguard, CB1, G Persona Blast, and we're gonna put a Kanon Guard grade zeros for the rest for that for that battle. And if the number of physical cards in your G zone is two or more, he gets a crit and bot deck one point three bot deck one point three cards. So uh, crit pressure, uh, guard trick pressure, and a bot deck, very good card. Uh, best thing about this card is the card is very self-efficient or um, resource efficient, I guess I'd say it. Um, and this card just does everything for a really low cost, which is really nice, so that's why you still play this card. I uh, wish I could play more, but Geno Space is really tight, so that's why I only played two. Uh, before, I've been playing around before where I was playing uh, two next stage, two Rider, four Rider Clocks, but I chose to go back to this because I found myself going wanting the extra Fate Rider more than anything, just because how good the Fate Rider is. But definitely play around the ratios. I'd say the only core you should be playing, the only like mandatory core is like two next stage, two Riders minimum, and two Rider Clocks. Everything else I think is a uh, flex overall. And speaking of Fate Rider, I used to play three of this card. His skill is once per turn, no cost. Uh, choose one of your regards and bot deck it. And then uh, call one card from your deck that's, that's grade plus one from the card you bot deck. And then for each face of card in your G zone, uh, you can give one, one of your units plus 3k. So you can turn yourself into solo attackers. It can tutor you whatever you want for the most part. Obviously, assuming you have the proper grade in your hand. Uh, no cost, very nice. Uh, just It just sort of just does a lot of things. It, it fixes your board state, it fixes your hand. Fixes whatever you will need it to do. A very, very good card. Uh, minimum two of. I like three. I like this card a lot. So I'm still playing three of it. And finally, this the quote unquote star of the show. So your new best finisher. Your new finisher uh, is a very powerful finisher. I won't deny that. But uh, very resource intensive. The next stage. So his skill is GB two. At the end of about this, you attack the Vanguard. If your heart is a Chrono Jet, CB one, G Persona flip, and discard three to uh, put this unit back into your G zone. Stand your heart and draw two. So. This card basically reads, um, at, restand your, uh, restand your, restand, but with your heart instead of your, uh, instead of itself. So, uh, it's good because next day, uh, Chrono Jet has a guard trick. It's bad because you can't, you can't put power on the next day. You have to, ha you have, to have a booster for this to work. Do a uh, assign power to back row, do it to, so you can save that power for the, uh, for the restand. So that kind of sucks. Uh, but the reason this card is not a four of is because you are never gonna be. It is it. You'd be very hard pressed to find games where you wish you had four of this because uh, discard three is just way too heavy of a cost to to, to uh, do multiple times in a game, especially late into the game where you're losing cards for guarding. So there's that, and the fact that uh, gears just have a really good like has a, have a bunch of good uh, G zone options. So no reason to just go no, no reason to play four of this card. Like like cool reason it's nice and all, but. Uh, if you're just looking to push two damage, uh, Ragnar Clock does it better. Uh, this card basically, in my opinion, is only going to your points at five, or if you just really need to um, try, to, try to rip cards out of your opponent's hand. Uh, the best, the, the thing that this card does best is ripping cards out of your opponent. Even if, because even if they don't die, assuming the jet gets two air tricked off, and let's just say you got four attacks into face, they lose a uh, uh, probably like a heal guard to your two rears. So that's two cards out of their hand. A PG to next stage, just three. And then uh, Chrono Jet itself, if it, if it gets the guard off, it rips a PG and a Grade 3 out of their hands. So that's five guards out of their hands immediately. So uh, the, the usually, the, the, usually what this card does is, even if it doesn't kill them, it cripples your opponent to the point where they probably don't have a very strong follow-up for uh, on their turn. So you get to kill them on the crackback after that. So uh, uh, Good finisher. Very good finisher. Best finisher in the deck. High ceiling that this deck can have. But at the same time, very cost intensive to balance it out. But overall, you still need to play this card because having that ceiling is very nice. So, yeah. So, that's it for this deck profile. I'll link games for you guys after this, as per usual. Uh, tell me guys what you think, down, think about this deck down below in the comments. If you're on global, if you're excited to play this deck whenever it comes out. And I will see you guys next time. Peace out.